Let's make a tower defense game. Now for this, I've built off of the city builder example, so I won't be explaining the things that were covered in that video, like selecting the building, placing it, and spending and earning gold. But let's look at the setup. I've got the indicator showing where the tower is going to be placed, the tower icon, which is the button in the top right corner, the tower base, and then the tower head, which will be the part that rotates to follow the enemy. Then the bullet that will be fired, the gold text to show you how much gold you have, the road that they'll be walking on, the zombie enemies that will be the actual enemies in the game, and then points for them to walk to, as well as a spawn point for them to start at, and a button made with the custom button object that's going to signal when the next wave should happen. And then there's a shape painter object that's used for the range, so you can see that circle around the tower before you place it. And then with the resource bar custom object, we have a life system. And now for behaviors, the tower head has the fire bullet extension, which you can find by adding new behaviors. The zombies have the health extension, as well as the tween behavior. The tween behavior will be there by default, but for the health one you'll need to search in the add new behavior tab. And then for variables, we're going to need to get into arrays, which were recently updated to make them a lot more user friendly. So if we go to the zombie, go to its variables, there's an array for target X and target Y. And an array is just like a structure where you can have multiple variables like a folder inside of the structure. But with an array, everything comes out numbered instead of having a name and you can add and remove numbers to the list. So those two variables in the zombie are going to be used to go to each point on the map. So we're going to fill up that array with the X and Y position of the first point, the second point, and then the third point, and use those points so the zombie knows where to go. And then in the scene variables, we have two more arrays. We have the wave array, which has our waves listed in it. So the first wave will have five enemies, the next one will have 10, the next 15, the next 20, the next 25 and the next array is being called Q. So the idea is that when we press the next wave button, what we're going to do is take this first variable in the wave array and add it as the first variable into the Q array and then remove it from the wave array. And then we use the variables in the Q to tell the game how many zombies to spawn. So if when the game starts, I press next wave three times, it will move five, 10, and 15 over to the Q and then it will spawn 5, 10, and 15 zombies in a row. But then to actually do that, we need to go to the events. So to do that thing I just described, we have this first event. When the next wave button is clicked, add the variable wave0, which is the top number in the list, to the array variable q, and then remove the variable at index 0 from the scene array variable wave. So we move the variable to a new list, and then remove it from the wave which will move everything else in the list up. Then for spawning, at the beginning of scene, start the spawning timer, and then when the timer is above one, and the number of children in the array variable Q is greater than zero, so as long as there's something there, and if the number of that scene variable Q zero, which is the first one on the list, is greater than zero, reset the timer so you can do this again, create a zombie at the spawn points X and Y position, and then change the scene variable Q zero, by subtracting one from it. So we've created a zombie, and then we take one off of the number from the queue. And that on its own would spawn five zombies that would stand in place. But now to get them to move. So we set the variable count of the zombie object that we just created to one. And then, repeating for each instance of point in the game scene, we check to see which point number of the point object is equal to that count. So if we go into the scene, you'll see each point has a variable called point number. And if we open up the properties panel, you can see I've changed that number in this panel by changing the first one to one, the second one to two, and the third one to three. So the zombie starts with the variable set to one, so this condition will pick the point object that has their variable set to one, and then add that point's x position and y position to the arrays in the zombie for the x position and y position. Then it will change the count number to two because it adds one to it. And because this is repeating for each instance of point, and there's three instances, it will do this again, but this time for two, because we changed the count variable to two. So it will add the x and y position of that second point object, then it will change it to three, and it will pick the third point object, and do the same thing, add it to the lists. So now inside that zombie object are two lists, 
of the x and y positions of the points they need to go to. Then, tween the object's position to the first x position on the target x list. And to get this, it won't exist already, so you'll need to go to the expression builder, search for object variable, pick the zombie as the object, pick target x as the variable, but then add, in square brackets, zero, and then press apply. And you'll see it's zombie variable target x zero. And then do the same thing for y. And then for the duration, you could put a set number here, but then the zombies would move at different speeds based on how far away the points are. So instead I'm using the distance between the two points times by 10. So this is the zombies x and y position compared to where they're going, which you can just copy and paste from up top. And then times that by 10 because milliseconds are really tiny. And now the enemies are spawning in a queue and moving to points. To find out about placing towers, shooting zombies, and losing your lives, you'll need to check out the next video. But first, if you want to check out the example that this was built off of, check out this video.